Shalom. Uh, before I get started, always and first and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutations to the elect out there, the brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Um, the title of this lesson is going to be Famine is Among Us in Babylon. Again, the title of this lesson is going to be Famine is Among Us in Babylon. Now, when I say us, I'm speaking about the whole, everybody who inhabits the land of Babylon, which is known, well, we know it as America, or you may know it as America. Um, of course, this famine that's coming to America, or that is among us, will not affect the elect of the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushua, because it tells us in scriptures that in famine we shall laugh, and Lord willing, like we always say, we, we pray and hope that we are a part of the Heavenly Father's elect. So the famine <coughs> is among us, is basically dealing with the entire population of mainly America. Now there's gonna be famines in other parts of the world, but here in America is where the great judgment, the great tribulation will take place. Even though there's gonna be tribulation throughout the planet Earth, but America has never seen tribulation or gone through what it's getting ready to go through through the spirit and power of the Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. Now, the reason I named it a great famine or famine is among us is, um, I don't know if brothers know, most brothers know I've heard brothers speak about it <coughs> in videos about the drought that's here in California you know, the wildfires and whatnot. Well, mainly the drought. The drought that's here in, in California, uh, specifically going up north uh, California. And up north is where you have a lot of farms. You have a lot of, uh, uh, where, they, where they grow vegetation, uh, oranges, uh, uh, nuts, different type of nuts. You name it. When you go, when you, Go up north, California, and you should start heading up north. You'll see all the farmland. You'll see a bunch of cattle. You will see a lot of it when you're heading up north. Now this this um, drought, which I'm speaking about, is up north <coughs> in Northern California. To be specific, it's a uh, Orville, California. Now, if you want to Google that and find out where, but I'm in post-production, Lord willing, I'll post pictures to show you how severe that this drought at the most high is putting, specifically here in America, but it's going to trickle down because you have, <clears throat> you have other major lakes and rivers that the most high is just going to dry up. And they got this saying in the world, uh, like if you if you drive past certain farms that's that's dealing with um say you drive past a farm that's growing uh maybe what some uh you know feed for cows or whatever and it's on on some of the farmhouses and I've, I've said witnessed this myself that's how I know it's the same but within the farmland farmer uh farm world uh. The saying is, where water flows, food grows. Which is correct because you need water to grow food. You can't grow food without water. And that's one of the plagues that the Heavenly Father has in store. And there's plenty of uh, examples recorded in the Bible of how the Most High brought famine. And how did he bring famine? He, he stopped the water. He stopped the water from coming. So there was no food uh, to grow. There was no food to eat. If you didn't, if you didn't like, the, in case case in point, Joseph being sold into Egypt, 
when you read in the book of Genesis, the reason the Most High had Joseph sold into the book in, into Egypt by his brothers was to preserve the Most High. The Most High was thinking uh, like a chess player, even though he's in control of everything. He he set it up that way because he was going to bring a famine to 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 the land of Canaan, also to Egypt. But he set it up to where Joseph would become governor and break down the dream for Pharaoh at the time and they would store up uh, corn so that they can have during the seven years of, of straight up famine. And that's how they survived because the Most High put the spirit on Joseph to break down the dream for Pharaoh. And you could go and you could read that story as well. You know, brothers should know about the story. But um, in this case of the drought here in California, see, this is what should be on the uh, the mainstream media because this 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 is uh, if they really cared about the people of America, which they don't, because the uh, the people of America, you're nothing but you you the future for you, according to the elites, how they want you, they want you as slaves. Mainly you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who represent the 12 tribes of Israel. They want you as slaves. You know, they want to put you back in hardcore slavery and kill off a lot more of you than they put in slavery. And, and, and the rest of you nations here in America, you, you, you're part of that, uh, they call you Goyim, they call you cattle, you're, you're useless eaters. You know, you're not in tune with what's really going on on the planet Earth. What's really going on on the planet Earth are things that are not being put on your mainstream media, i.e., in this case, this drought, this water drought <coughs> that's severe. It's, a, it's, it's real severe. And when you see these pictures, you're going you're gonna, to, in, in a span of three years, this, this lake, uh, this natural source of water flow that's up in Northern California, Orville, California, uh, is is totally drying up. It's totally just uh, the most high is uh, disintegrating the water. And then, meanwhile, you have Americans, you peons. You're 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 going on YouTube or whatever social media site, Facebook, whatever it is, and you're dumping buckets of water over your head. But there's a drought here in the state of California, and you Americans are wasting water. When this, when the Most High brings this this full-fledged famine, you're gonna wish that you had that bucket of water that you dumped on your head to get publicity <clears throat> from the media. You know, and that's fine. You, you people continue to be stuck in folly, Hollywood, folly land. Continue to be wicked because while you're doing all this, the Most High is bringing His prophecies to pass, and it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful that the Most High is doing what He's doing because the masses have have not a clue. <coughs> now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pull out some scriptures. You know, I didn't want to make this too long. I just wanted to make it short and sweet and show brothers these different pictures of, of this this uh, this massive uh, this water this natural flow of water that the Heavenly Father is literally drying up here in North California in Northern California not here and I'm not in Northern California I'm actually in Southern California but this water flow it tells you let me see if I can find it. I'm gonna read the article. I'm gonna read a clip of this article real quick, just to show you how severe. And then, Lord willing, you know, through the Spirit, I'll be able to post these pictures to show you how vast and how serious and severe that this drought really is. See, they ain't putting this on the media because if this was on the media and people actually knew how severe the drought was, 
you wouldn't have people dumping buckets of water on their head. You you would have people actually being serious, man. Because once the once the water is uh, like it is over there in uh, Detroit, they turn off Jake water. Jake ain't got no water over there, man. And what's that gonna lead to? You turn off your water. If they turn off your water, you, it's gonna lead to you what? Looting and rioting, going in the stores to steal what? Water. Now it says here, this is the uh, the article. I'll put the link in the uh, in the uh, in the box on the, on the page. But this is the title of the article. It says, "Stunning before and after images of California's drought." I'm gonna go straight down to the point I wanted to read. And like I said, I'm gonna post the, uh, the link so brothers can go on their cells and check it out and read the whole article. I'm not gonna read the whole article, but I'm gonna, you know, hit the pictures. I'm gonna hit you with the pictures. And I'm gonna read just this certain parts, certain parts of uh, this article. This main part right here, uh, it says here, it says the West, meaning the West Coast, the West has lost 63 trillion gallons of surface water in the drought. 63 trillion gallons of water has been in the span of in these in these uh, before and after shots. They got a, they got pictures of before going back to uh, July of 20, 2011 and up to date pictures of how the lake looks now as of August, which was last month, the end of August, about August 24th, or August 25th. And you can clearly see in the span of three years that the Most High literally damn near dried this, this massive uh, body of water straight up. He literally damn near dried it all the way up. And you can see, you'll, you'll be able to see with the pictures. So this famine is upon us. This, this uh, lack of uh, food and water, as the scriptures prophesy, is upon, is upon us. Uh, as for the elect, we, we, we're, we're not worried about these things because we believe in the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, my, I, myself, and the brothers that the Most High have surrounded me with, we pray that we're part of the elect and all the brothers who are pushing the word throughout the four corners of the planet, beginning with the, the apostles of Great Millstone, we all are, we hope that we are a part of the Heavenly Father's elect, you know? And that's why we do shows, that's why we go out week in and week out, and we teach this, we teach this word and we bring forth the prophecies. Now this famine, <coughs> this drought, which is going to lead to a famine, and which, which, the thing that leads, and it tells you in the book of uh, Tobit, the fourth chapter, that lewdness is the mother of famine, and there's, before I get into that scripture, that word lewdness basically means, I looked it up, the word lewdness, the word lewdness, the dictionary.com, we'll just go there, it means to it means inclined to, characterized by, or incited to lust or lechery, lasciviousness, obscene or indecent, um, low, ignorant, or vulgar, base, vile, wicked, especially of a person, bad, worthless, or poor, especially a thing. Now, when Tobit told his son Tobias that that lewdness is the mother of famine. Remember, he was he was uh, telling him to get out of. Uh, well, at the end of the end of the uh, book, he told him to leave Nineveh. Leave Nineveh because the, the the prophecies of of the prophet Jonah shall surely come to pass. Now, when you Nineveh is another name for America. 
Nineveh is, is synonymous. You can, you can, because Nineveh, the things that was going on in Nineveh is happening in America. The things that was going on in ancient Babylon, the idol worship, different, different, different gods for every different day, is going on in America. The things that were happening in Egypt, ancient Egypt, they're happening here in America. You know, so America is is all these ancient. Uh, societies that were built based upon wickedness and the worship of Satan when you when you, when you boil down to it all those societies are America wrapped into one so that's why this is going to be the great place of tribulation and judgment and also deliverance because the Heavenly Father's elect is over here in America and that's why we are, are called to push this word to to to, to uh, uh, enlighten or, or trigger the elect to turn back to the Heavenly Father. Now I'm going to read the scripture. <clears throat> it's uh, the book of Tobit, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse. The key point is in the, is in the fourth line on down. It says, Now therefore, my son, love thy brethren and despise not in thy heart thy brethren the sons and daughters of thy people and not taking a wife of them for in people it's like it for in pride is destruction and much trouble that's found here in America everybody in America is proud about something you know and in lewdness is decay and great want for lewdness is the mother of famine now going back to the word lewdness when you look it up in the etymology, it, it means lustful, shame, shameless. Uh, let me see if I still got. I ain't, I don't still have it up here on my page, so I'm not. Matter of fact, let me pull it up. So. Lewd. It comes from the word lewdness. Is from the word lewd. And lewd is basically everything that goes on in America. Shamelessness. You, you, every day you go out, you have women that are basically, especially in the summertime, you have women walking the streets, damn near naked. They call themselves wearing shorts with half their ass out. You know? And, and the Most High ain't fine with that, man. The Most High is not fine to a woman exposing her body and 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 and, and uh, homosexuality is is rampant. That's lewdness. That's there's no shame in it anymore. Going back in the nineties, you didn't see homosexuals and lesbians the way they running rampant in the streets of America. That's a, a, a sign of lewdness. And when you see that lewdness, guess what else? Is, what's after that? We just read it in the book of Tobit that lewdness is the mother of famine. So the Most High has, has, has great judgment that he's getting ready to bring with this famine, beginning with the drought, because once the water is dried up, there's going to be no more sources to, 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 to grow food. You need water. Where water flows, food grows. That's a, 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 a saying in the farmer's world, so to speak. So... Going back to this word, lewd, it says non-clerical, uncertain origin, but probably ultimately from vulgar Latin, ligo, from Latin laces, sense of unlettered, uneducated, descended to, coarse, vile, lustful. And that's that's America summed up. Vile and lustful. Because everything about America is vile. And it's lustful. What's the what's the lustful? The lust for the flesh here. You it, it's, it's you can't even help it. You can't even uh, escape it, so to speak. You can't escape because the women are shameless. The men are beasts. And 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 all you have is the elect that's trying to do the right thing in a land that's based upon the worship of Satan. And everything contrary to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai.
So that's why the Most High is getting ready to bring this famine, man. This famine that's going to be among us. And only the elect is going to eat in that time. And it, it tells us in the Apocrypha that in famine we shall laugh. But majority of the planet Earth, majority of America, they're going to feel this famine. The scriptures tell you also in the Apocrypha, it's better to be slain by the sword, by the sword than to be slain by famine. You know, because literally in the famine, your body be begins to eat itself from the inside out. And that's what's coming, man. That's what's coming. And I'm going to read some more scripture, you know, dealing with this drought. We're going to go from there. We're going to go to Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, which when you read this whole chapter, this whole chapter is dedicated to the destruction, which is, or, or not even going to say dedicated, which is prophesied of the destruction of Babylon the Great, Great Babylon, a.k.a. America. This is uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 37, and the, the key, 57, I mean, it's like 50, 37 to 38. The key point is the 38 verse. It says, the sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her, and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures and they shall be robbed because it's going to be a great tribulation period here in America, which is uh, better known as the time of trouble, uh, uh, martial law, you know, a police state, a full-blown blown police state. Um, verse 38, it says, A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. Did you hear that? Verse 38, it says, A drought is upon her waters and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. Talking about America, Great Babylon. The, 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 the masses of the people here in America do not know, do not want to know, don't know anything about the true power, the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. They don't have a clue, His characteristics, or what they are really about. And that's why the Heavenly Father has set us up. And we're here to, to declare to you this, this God that you unknowingly worship. Starting with our people, beginning, no, not starting, beginning, and it's only for our people in the first place, but only two, uh, but two thirds of you aren't gonna get it, you're gonna die right here in America. But the one third is gonna is gonna hear this word and and, and, and be triggered <clears throat> through hearing the word and, and turn back to the heavenly Father and the Lord is gonna deliver you. That's His elect. So we read verse thirty eight again. It says, "The drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols." And that's like I said again. That's talking about America. <clears throat> the drought is upon her waters the, the natural water the, the natural water flow that the, the heavenly father ha <coughs> has placed in america these these massive lakes and rivers and, 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 and streams the most high is starting to dry them up you know and ultimately they're going to be dried up when the nuclear missiles touch down in america that's going to be the icing on the cake you know but the heavenly father is also drying up drying them up now. He's drying them up, these massive bodies of water that's in different segments of America. This this case, Oroville, California, going up north. The Heavenly Father is drying up that mass uh, body of water, you know, which is uh, a forest type uh, surroundings. And you'll see the pictures in post-production. All right, from there, we go to the 51st chapter. <laughs> and read the 36th verse, Jeremiah 51 and 36. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. There it is again, the Most High, that's part of him taking vengeance. 
you know, on Babylon, on America. Why is he taking vengeance? Because of what they did to his people over here. And all you gotta do is go into the history of how the white man came over here and he raped, robbed, and murdered the Native American Indians and he stole their land, which is known as America today. He stole Central and South America, which all the tribe, the 10 tribes dwelt among, among this, this part of the uh, earth. And it tells you that in the Apocrypha. And they, they, um, they, after they conquered the Northern Kingdom, which was, um, yeah, the Northern Kingdom, which consists of 10 tribes that came over to this part of the earth, they went back to the old world. First, they began in Portugal and Spain, and they gathered up slaves, which consist of, uh, you call us niggers or Negroes. Which, or, or African Americans, which were not African. You brought us from the west coast of Africa, Portugal and Spain, and that's where you have your uh, <clears throat> North Atlantic um, trade, slave trade, which you had different boats, different ships, i.e. the Mayflower, one of them, that would go around in that region of water to uh, pick up slaves, bring slaves from this part of the earth, Portugal, Spain, or let me go, or the west coast of Africa, and even down in Central and South America, Brazil, they would gather up uh, slaves and they would take slaves there because they, they destroyed off a lot of the Latin tribe men uh, during that time. And they brought some of the Southern Kingdom, which consists of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, to repopulate uh, the, uh, the, to, so they can have more slaves down there. So that's why you have that that North Atlantic slave trade, and you'll see pictures of that flowing throughout YouTube. That was the white man's uh, slave trafficking, you know? And they're gonna pay for that. I'm gonna read it again, it says, <clears throat> Jeremiah 51 and 36. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. <clears throat> so the Heavenly Father is actually in the process of doing that. Because these prophecies are going to continue to come to pass. And they're not going to stop. We're in the time of judgment. From there we're going to go to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. In the 15th verse. It says, I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs and I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. Now when it said I will make the rivers islands because through them rivers, the massive rivers you have, uh, if you ever seen like a river, a mass, a massive river, a big river, you know, like they got the Arkansas River, they have certain, uh, like you have a, a like a small island, so to speak, in the midst of it, with the trees and, and a little greenery around it. Well, when that water recedes and dries up out of there, all you have is a hill that's like a it looks like an island. You know what I'm saying? And you will see some of that in the pictures that I post in post production. I'm gonna read it again. It says. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs and I will make their rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. Your pools again, uh, rivers, lakes, uh, even, even you got, you got, you even have ponds, uh, natural ponds, you know what I'm saying, these lakes, the most high is going to dry up all the sources of water. You know what I'm saying? Let alone, you got the white man, the devil. He's he's charging you, and he's uh he's also buying up uh, natural water, natural water uh, sprouts, so to speak. Because why? They want to put you so-called Nick. They want to starve you, Negroes, and you Latinos and Native Americans, until the point to where you accept this RFID chip, Mark of the Beast. 
That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. It ain't about nothing else. This goes, this, this goes, did the history or, or, or the reality of what's going on right now, you, 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 you Jake being shot down by the cops in a merciless fashion, it all goes back to the Bible, man. It all goes back to the Bible. It goes back to the scriptures. That's why the things happen to you the way they happen to you. It's because it's all prophesied and written in the Bible. And but two thirds of you ain't gonna get it anyway. So, but it's our job to push it out there for the elect to get it. From there, <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the 44th chapter, <clears throat> the 27th verse. It says, uh, let me see if I can start up a little bit. I'll probably, I'll start up at uh, 26. Just to build, because the 27th verse is not a strong, it's a strong script. All scriptures are strong, but it's a short scripture, so I'm going to build it up. The key point is in the 27th verse, it says, That confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof, that saith to the deep, now this is what the Heavenly Father is saying to the to the to the to the uh, mass body bodies of water here in America. That said to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. So that's one of the things the Heavenly Father has been, has done throughout the history of us being on the planet Earth. Case in point, if you go to First Kings, the seventeenth chapter. Let me go there real quick. It says this. It says, uh, 1 Kings 17 and 1. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord power of Israel liveth, be be before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook of Shereth that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So basically, Elijah the Tishbite, which was an Israelite, he was a messenger of the Heavenly Father, a prophet. He basically prophesied that the Most High wasn't gonna make it, it wasn't gonna rain and the dew wasn't going to come up to water the crops in that region of land because the Most High was getting ready to uh, bring famine and judgment on that land. And he told Elijah to go by the, the brook of, the brook of uh, Tarah, or Karah and drink from that and he going to send ravens to feed him because why? He was a part of the Most High's elect. Just like us in this time, Lord willing, we're part of the Most High. The Most High going to feed us. You know, the Most High used ravens to feed Elijah. <clears throat> so, now we're bringing out these prophecies in this time, telling you that famine is coming, that a uh, water shortage, a drought is coming. You know? <clears throat> and it is a fear tactic. It's a fear tactic for you to fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Not to fear man, but to fear the Most High. That's the fear, that's the fear we're trying to put on our people. Mainly, really only the elect. You know, because two thirds don't fear the most high, they don't care about the most high. Um, from there, I just want to get a few more scriptures. Like I said, I don't want it to be, I didn't want this to be as long as it's gone already, but you know, through the spirit, Lord willing, brothers is edified. From there, I want to go to uh, Isaiah 52. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 2 it says wherefore when I came I was there no man when I called was there none to answer is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem or have I no power to deliver behold at my rebuke I dry up the sea 
I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water and dieth for thirst. So that's what's coming to America again. At the, at the rebuke of the Most High, he dries up seas. And he, and, he, and, he, and he makes rivers of wilderness. And when I show you these pictures, when you see these pictures, you're gonna say, you, you're, gonna, you, you're gonna think in your mind, that's the hand of the Most High. Because that's literally what these pictures show. It shows a, a body, a, a massive body of water. And in the after picture, three years in the future of that picture, uh, this year, August 2014, it shows it damn near being a wilderness, a desolate wilderness, you know? And that's what's, that's what's coming, man. That's why the Most High set up our elders, the apostles, to, to he set them up to teach the truth, 100% truth, to warn you of what's to come. That's all that those men were set up to do. That's all that we are set up to do. Those, us of us, us men that are under the apostles, great millstone. What's all we're set up to do is teach this word and warn you of the things to come. You know, that's it. You know, don't don't expect us to, because uh, we ain't going, if, 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 if some way, somehow, the most high deem it to where we're being interviewed by a different news cast, we're, we're not going to tell you, like, the IUIC. We're not going to give interviews like that. We're going to tell you the full fledged truth. Rough, rugged, and raw. The white man is the devil. America's going to be destroyed. And the Most High is only dealing with the elect of his nation's people. And I'm just, you know, I'm just putting it out there. That's the main things, man. Not once did you hear in that interview that the white man was the devil and that America was going to be destroyed and that martial law will be implemented in the streets of America. You didn't, it, that, that was all BS, man. If they were really passionate about the word and about Yahweh by Shimei that was their, that was a grand opportunity to let the world know, <coughs> to let the entire world know. But that's another proof and sign that that school under Nathaniel 7, or Nate Satan has sold out, has sold out to uh, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. Now I don't want to stay on that because that'll lead off into a whole another hour of, of uh, video. Now I, I just wanted to focus on this 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 drought here in um, California. Now from that from Nahum, I'm sorry, it from uh. Isaiah 50 and 2, we're going to go to Nahum, book of Nahum. <clears throat> we're going to start at first, the first chapter and just the fourth verse. It says, Nahum chapter 1, I'm going to start at 3, and I'm going to read the 4. It says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, and dryeth up all the rivers, Bashan languisheth, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. So, like I said earlier, where there's no water, <laughs> no food will grow. Or, or the farmer's quote, or saying, or, or, or what's the, the name, the words they use? Farmers, uh, well, we just use quote. Uh, where water flows, food grows. Well, the Most High is just saying, when he dry up these rivers and these, and these lakes and the seas, that it says the flower of Lebanon shall languish, it shall lack. Lack what? Lack, lack that moisture, that water that it needs to feed and to grow. Not only flowers, but uh, vegetation. You know, if there's no flowers, there's no honey. You know, no, no pollen for bees to, to pollinate and to create more vegetation. There's gonna be none of that, man. The Most High is getting ready 
to bring great judgment in America. And he's starting off, see, by he's starting off by drying up these these uh, bodies of water throughout America that feed America drinking water, that feed these certain states their portions of drinking water, man. You know, they go, they filter them, they, they put dams to control them, to, to control that, that body of water that the Heavenly Father has, has put in that land, you know. So the Most High is actually drying these uh, bodies of water up, and it's going to lead to great famine in America. Thus saith the Bible. Go well, from there to the book of Haggai, <coughs> chapter 1. Uh, verses 10 and 11 it says therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit and I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands so there it is right there if there's a drought, that means everything is going to suffer, including the things that come forth from the earth that need water to grow, the cattle, the animals, men, you know, and labors. Because, you know, the Most High is getting ready to shut America totally down, man. Totally. He's going to straight up shut this place down, man. And like I said, he's starting by this, uh, the, these uh, droughts, and he's going to starve. He's going to destroy America from the inside out, man. And he's already doing so. And you're going to see a lot more Negroes being killed. And you're still going to see folly on the news. Instead of them showing you things like this about how severe this drought really is in California, they're going to show you this old 81 year old plastic face Edomite woman all her little tributes on the news goodbye Jones River it was just Robin Williams you know they they just they, they distracting the masses so they can do what they can do behind closed curtains so to speak so when it comes it's gonna be so bad and so severe that you people are gonna be lining up to get chipped to get the RFID uh, chip, which is the mark of the beast recorded in the Bible, you know, and that's what it's that's what it's all all this is leading up to, you know, everything that you see, the Jake's getting shot down in the street, uh, you see you see uh, your rights slowly being taken from you with these executive orders that Obama is, is, is constantly pushing out and signing. You see uh, the police being militarized. You seeing droughts. You seeing food prices slowly creep up. You, you seeing everything that's in the making of this great tribulation period, a time of trouble that's coming in the streets of America. And if you're not part of the Heavenly Father's elect, if you're, if, if you're not one of his chosen ones, you will be caught out there and you will be, you will be uh, dealt with with one of the plagues of the Heavenly Father. It, it tells you, in a, as a matter of fact, I'm going to read it. And I'm going to end it on this. It says, It says, uh, this is uh, Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. And I'm going to read the first verse, but then I'm going to jump. Matter of fact, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5, and I'm going to end it on that. It says, uh, Behold, this is Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which, first and foremost, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah with the spirit on the apostles of Great Millstone to do. And that same spirit that he put on the, the, the elder apostles, our elder apostles, is the same spirit that's that's put upon the brothers throughout 
the four corners of the planet Earth that's sincere and that teach 100% truth and don't waver anything and don't leave out, omit anything of the truth. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. The, the Lord's people is the nation of Israel, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans here in, here in Babylon. And also, you, and I gotta throw this out there because you have a lot of the Irish, Italians, whose fathers, fathers go back to the Moors who ruled that portion of uh, uh, Europe, that ruled Europe at the time during the Dark Ages. They look like white people, but they're actually Israelites because of the Moors taking over Edomites and lying down with the women. And as the time went on, they had children with these white women, the white women's children, sons, some were light-skinned and they grew up and they, you know, it was the, the, the slavery thing, man. We put the Edomites in slavery, slept with their women, had lighter-skinned uh, sons. When the Edomites came into power, they took us down, but our sons were still the light-skinned sons among them that, that, that took their wives or took their daughters and had seed with them and had seed and had seed. And eventually, the Negro features uh, totally left, but the spirit is still the same. <clears throat> Let me go back. Let me get through this. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee, our people, with their unfaithfulness. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And that's what's coming. And <clears throat> to the elect out there, continue to do what we've been doing. Continue to uh, pray and constantly hasten the day of Yahweh Shem Yahweh to the two-thirds, death to you, and to the rest of you people in America, death to you. And before I end, you know, all praise to Yahweh Shem Shai. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and salutations to the elect. And with that, I'm gonna say Shalom.